from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Award for Best Program and the Award for Best Educational Program. I'm the host and producer, John Latz. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds, and Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is animals. This is segment one of episode 43. Today we, we take our first steps from familiar farm animals to a walk on the wild side. Now, the word wild in English is used to describe ungoverned actions and behaviors, often meaning dangerous. It's the opposite of the word tamed. Well, as we're using the word today, wild, in this program, we mean the opposite of domesticated. So we're moving from farm animals to animals that live their lives without having their needs met by humans, animals whose behavior is not a result of training imposed by people. When learning a new language, it's best to begin with what's familiar to the student. Consequently, we've begun this unit on animals with pets and farm animals. Let's begin this transition with a quick review of the familiar. Here's a video clip about farm animals. We present it as the fourth episode on this subject. Watch and enjoy the video, Farm Animals. Welcome back to the farm. This is Farm Animals Part 2. You'll remember that old MacDonald had a farm, and on that farm, he had some ducks. Well, he also had some geese. Now, in English, we have some special words for these big birds. One of them is called a goose, but a group of them are called geese. The male is called a goose, but the female is called a gander. A group of geese is called a gaggle. There are no babies in this gaggle, but if there were, they would be called goslings. These domesticated geese are biologically no different from the wild geese, only in their behavior. These are Canada geese. They have a very good life here on the farm. So they stay here. They leave it to their wild cousins to make the awesome high mileage migration from the cold Arctic to the warm Gulf Coast and back each year. Geese are raised on the farm mostly for their eggs. You can tell by the fuzzy nature of their feathers that these are young geese, older than goslings, but not yet adult. In the background, you can hear the sound that geese normally make. And geese are sometimes confused with ducks, but geese have longer necks. Both geese and ducks are often found where there's water. Can you tell which of these geese are the adults? Another bird on Old MacDonald's farm is the turkey. Now, there's a marked difference between domesticated turkeys and wild turkeys. Turkeys are usually raised for their meat. As food, turkeys are very popular in the United States at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. Turkeys grow to be very large birds, so one turkey can usually feed the whole crowd that gathers around the table for these holidays. <laughs>
in the foreground here is a turkey hen, while a male turkey spreads its tail in the background. A male turkey is called a tom. Now, toms spread their tails in a display to attract the female. Let's see how this works out. The tom is certainly doing his best, but the hen seems more interested in being on the other side of the fence than in mating with this flamboyant Romeo. It's a sad story for the tom. The object of his pursuit has literally flown the coop. Not every farmer tends honeybees on the farm, but that's what's going on on this farm. The smoke from this device calms down members of the hive, allowing the beekeeper access to the teeming hive. Bees are raised to produce honey that's the excess food they store in the cells they make. Honeybees are from Europe. They produce the highest quality honey in the volume that makes all this work worthwhile. This panel is inspected to and see the bees' progress. Build this home, and I see Ooh. nectar in there. So we're busy filling those and laying eggs. And well, not in this one, though, because we've got the queen excluded. So. Worker bees arrive with the nectar they've gleaned from flowers, as well as their dusting of pollen. While honey bees are domesticated, like these, some hives are wild. There are also many species of bees that are native to America. All of them provide a critical function of pollinating crops and other plants. Let's see what this one looks like. You can clearly see the cells they make from beeswax. Look at the yellow structures. I hope you've mastered the names of common farm animals. See, that's the foundation from which we transition to wild animals. Now keep the images of farm animals in your head so they can be used to describe certain farm animals. Now some animals, some animal life forms, I should say, will look nothing like your pets or like farm animals, but many of them will have some resemblance. We'll look at some of those and I'll have some words of encouragement when we return. organization that's doing big time restoration of forests and stream banks. Hello, I'm John Letts, producer of Adventures in Education.